about 5.30. I'm pretty excited. It's nice and cold. It snowed outside, so there's probably like three or four inches of snow. Um, that was unexpected. So about the middle of September, uh, just starting out the archery hunt here in Idaho. So uh, should start to get a little warm in here. Reminds me of some old hunts up here in Idaho with Jim, where we had this little just nylon tent, and we'd get up in the morning. We were so cold and snowed something like this, and. Um, Man, it was so hard trying to get ourselves out of the tent. We turned on the lantern, and the lantern would get off just enough heat to kind of warm up the tent to get us to get out and put some cold boots on and <laughs> go for a hike. So, anyway, see my breath? A little chilly. All right, just getting out in the first morning here. Just starting to get light. Just looking back across the way, and here runs a bull with all about three or four cows. But watch him, he's pretty funny as he pushes his cows back. Early this morning I'd seen about eight elk and they all went in just over the hill from me here. Kind of seemed like a pretty small bull. And anyways. So I figure oh, I'll post up on this saddle kind of here in the evening. But anyways, as I was walking around, I was going to look on the back side of this ridge. They started to come out. Here can, you know, a couple of cows. Well, anyways, over time, oh, it must have been probably a good 30 or 40 came out. Probably about three or four different bulls. And they walked across and then just right below me. So pretty fun anyways. I, I could have made a strategy to get on them and try to make a shot, but... I was having way too much fun with the camera, so I wasn't in a great spot to move necessarily. There was only this really short sagebrush. So I laid down kind of behind the longest sage or the tallest sagebrush I could find, poked 20, you know, my cameras up above it, and then um, just took a number of pictures and some video. And At one point, it was interesting. They're all looking back up on the ridge. I'm like, oh, what, what are they looking at? And I look back up over there, and there's two coyotes that are running down the ridge. So, anyways, got a little video of them, but they didn't like that very much, so they ended up moving out. And it's kind of funny. They were they actually walked right past where I was sitting up there this morning. That was kind of my spot. And if I'd stayed there, probably about two or three hours longer, I might have had 40 elk walk all right past me. So. Anyway, it's pretty fun. Maybe I'll come back on another day, bring Jim up, and uh, we could try it again. Right now, I decided to post down here. If for some reason somebody hikes up tonight and they spook back over this direction, they should run right past me. So, I'm kind of leaning towards that right now rather than trying to figure out how to get in front of them or just let them come to me. Jim made it in Saturday night, but just in time to see a few bulls, and, and that was about it. Sunday, we headed out out to church and decided we should pick up his horses. So we went back, picked up his horses, moved our camp, and, and got all set up. Not without a little hassle of a flat tire, and, and then we were back at it again. One thing that's played well for me this year is anytime I'm hunting... 
I'm always looking across the mountains to see what else is there and just to see where their animals are located. And this is a perfect example. This group of elk I spotted maybe three days ago. And when we came back, we decided, let's go back up and see if those guys are still there. Now we had one catch, which didn't help out too much, was there was another hunter going up into the same area we were. And we made a little bit of a rash decision to run up and I got just up over the hill and there was a cow about 40 yards from me. And so I sat down, got real quiet, and I don't know exactly what happened. The wind seemed to be in good and off they all went. So we we're so close, but I think just a little rushed with this other hunter and kind of wanting to get up to a good point. And unfortunately we just had to watch this group walk away. We spotted this group while we were chasing some other elk and decided to circle back on top of them. We decided not to go after this elk. We didn't think from this angle he didn't look too good, but as we were sitting there, we also spotted a buck over where we'd spotted some bucks walking through a few days earlier. One deer for sure. I could see it was a buck. It's a long ways away here for this camera, but <laughs> needs to get a picture of where a couple animals are. And Jim decided to go after this buck. Watch this next few minutes. This is pretty fun on what happened here. First, I actually, as he was going off, I didn't want to scare this bigger buck they were looking at, but there was two or three bucks all bedded down here in the grass, and at first I thought they had spotted Jim, and I thought he was going to be busted, but he made a pretty good spot on a bigger buck that was laying up in the bushes up a little higher. Right there. So as these deer go busting out, I didn't see this right away, but I ran around the top of the hill right after he'd shot. And as soon as I got to the other side, just over the next peak, here come these bucks. They're walking up the next gully around, which is fairly typical for a deer. They'll circle around um, when they get spooked. And I'm sitting there filming and I couldn't figure it out. All of a sudden they see this little yellow thing going back and forth when this deer moves its head. And sure enough, Jim's hit this deer right square in the antler. So whoever finds that shed, or somebody harvests that buck, that's gotta be, we just laughed about that for a good few hours. I radioed him after I had filmed this. I'm like, well, you hit the deer. But the bad news is, he's not hurt. After Jim had finished hunting those deer, I went back up and tried to get on this bull and they were essentially on the move though by the time I got back and I never could close the distance, but I did enjoy watching him. He was chasing these cows and, and finally they moved off, but definitely a fun day. Day number four. This is pretty fun. I, I got up early in the morning and headed up on this back up where I had filmed the elk the very first morning. And I sat on the side hill where I've seen them cross through quite often. And the wind was howling and I was freezing. So this group was kind of funny. I had crossed over the hill, but the fog was way down low. So I crossed over this hill and sat up underneath a pine tree. And as soon as the fog lifted, I looked up and these elk were all probably within 60 or 70 yards from me. I had no idea they were even there. I just crossed over to get out of the wind. And they were all sitting there. They actually walked right up over to me and then turned and walked the other way. I don't think they ever knew I was there, but I was so close to having a good shot at this bull.
this one I I bugled over there. I didn't know where these elk were here. I bugled a ridge or two away, and about five cows came up on the ridge and were looking for me. It was interesting, and then they they tucked back off the ridge, and so I thought oh, I should go see what's over there. So I came up right on top of them. It's probably 150 yards away. And just slowly, just inched my way all the way down to, I got down to 60 yards and I had this great big six point that I had bedded with about five other cows. And anyways, I was set up. So six yards was good enough. I figured I didn't want to try to get any closer and I was kind of running out of sagebrush to hide behind. I was ready, had my bow. I thought, oh, I'll film one more time. So I'm filming him just for a minute, just in case, you know, I didn't can't get a chance to shoot the bull and anyways right as I'm filming this bull walks right in front of him quartering away you know and I was a little afraid the other bull like if he stood up he wasn't the best shot I didn't look at him too quickly but I just thought oh that works that's good enough so he came right across the other bull about 50 yards and just gave me a great shot probably only ran down here about probably ran down about 100 yards or so and died I thought there was only like six or eight cows with this bull that I was watching and anyways, the whole group that was over here that I couldn't see um, all took off and then they were kind of in the way. I think this one was right below it when it died. But I set my camera down just long enough to sit up, take a shot, and then lay back down and I grabbed my camera just in time to watch this bull run off. watch this. This bull that I just shot ran right in front of the other bull that I was waiting to shoot. Here's the payback he gives him. There was a couple nice bulls that were hanging out with this herd. And after I'd shot my bull, I just sat there and filmed these guys. And I couldn't decide whether I was more grateful that I didn't shoot this big bull here. Because just filming and watching him was just amazing. I just enjoyed every minute that I had just to sit here and, and take it all in. So there it is. Um, oh, let's see if I can hold them up. <laughs> that is a nice bull. I hiked hard and I'm going to take him home and just have the memory of being out here with my brother. So Jim's over there. I was supposed to go meet up with him, but I saw these guys and came over. So he'll probably be pretty surprised tonight when we get a chance to show him. We can spend the last few days and see if we can help Jim find, find something for him. So. Anyways, great time, little bowl, and just a fun, fun memory here in Idaho. Um, these animals aren't easy to hunt, I can tell you that. <laughs> so hard to get close to them, but the wind was just perfect. Uh, just a lot of fun.